Happy Glacier Science Day! Ranger Melissa smiles and waves standing next to a dome-shaped building about twice her height. Uh, I'm on the east side of Glacier National Park, right here at the St. Mary Visitor Center. And it looks like maybe something out of a science fiction movie behind me, but it's actually the Dusty Star Observatory here at St. Mary. And this is a place where people can come and learn all about the night sky, the dark skies here in Waterton Glacier, and explain about what you can see with the observatory and the importance of our dark skies, we're going to meet up with Lee Rademacher, who's the lead interpreter for the east side as well as the astronomy coordinator. So I'm so excited to meet up with Lee and learn so much more about, well, the majestic sky above me. So let's go find him. I'm actually right here, Melissa. <laughs> Lee pops out of the opening in the observatory's dome. Hey Lee, you scared me. Why you just pop right out of the observatory? Yeah, well welcome to Dusty Star. Come on in. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Inside the observatory, they stand on either side of a long cylindrical metal piece of equipment. So this observatory is a, it's the tan structure that you see that looks kind of like a, a dome in yeah. the vis visitor center parking lot. And it is a 12 foot observatory, so 12 feet across. Um, and okay. the roof of this observatory opens up to the night sky and can spin all the way around to see the entire night sky. Oh my gosh, so, so everything can rotate. Yep. Seen from outside, a panel on the dome's roof slides open. Wow. So we've got the rotating dome. So we've got, yeah, we've got the rotating dome. Okay. We've got the, the slot cover that opens up to see the night sky. Looking out of the opening from inside the dome at a blue sky with fluffy light clouds. Yep. We've got computer equipment that allows the, the dome to talk to the, the telescope and the, the computer. Inside the dome, computers and equipment fill recessed shelves. Okay. And then you get to the stuff here in the center of the observatory. Um, the computer can tell the, the telescope where to point and control where the, the whole thing is pointing, the, the dome, the telescope, everything. It'll point to something with pinpoint accuracy and get it in the wow. center of the, the monitor no every time. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and we have a 20-inch plane wave telescope. The cylindrical object is a telescope mounted on a stand. Wires and electronics hang down from it. And that means the big mirror down here at the base is 20 inches across, and that allows us, allows us to gather a whole bunch of light from distant faint objects. Wow. So without that, we wouldn't be able to see a galaxy or a nebula that's so far away that you can't see it with your naked eye. An image of a galaxy, a bright point of yellow light surrounded by swirls of clouds in the black expanse of starry space. It requires a big mirror and a big telescope. All the way back here at the bottom is the, the main primary mirror. Lee touches a black electronic box on one side of the telescope. And then all the way up towards the top is a smaller secondary mirror. He points to the top. So this is a really awesome instrument that uh, the Glacier National Park Conservancy uh, funded and allowed us to, to purchase. They almost um, fund the astronomy program on their own. Very wow. little of the park's funds go into, to go into this program. Wow, that's amazing. A trailer parked near the observatory with text, Glacier National Park Astronomy Program. Drawings of people looking up at constellations in the sky. This telescope is set up a little bit differently than uh -huh. what you would see, like, you know, in a backyard telescope. Yeah. Lee operates an outdoor telescope, a thick black cylinder about shoulder height that is pointed toward the sky. He stands in a grassy field with misty mountains in the distance. Um, most backyard telescopes use an IP. He points to the telescope inside the dome. Wires are connected to the bottom. Right. This one uses a, a cooled astronomical camera that allows us wow. to share these images onto a screen that's actually outside the observatory. How do you find the object you want to look for? He stands outside the dome rotating a large flat panel screen attached to the side. So our computer has a catalog, a visual catalog of all okay. of the objects. So okay. we can type an object into the computer if Whoa. we know what it is, or we can just click on the screen and say, go here, and the telescope oh will slew gosh. or move to that object. So tell me, what are some of your favorite, um, I don't know, like either your favorite things you've seen through this in the night sky, or maybe some of the more popular ones that visitors enjoy? Yeah. So. Um, Probably some of the objects that, uh, actually a lot of the objects that we see are probably ones you're pretty familiar with. So obviously the moon is an easy target, and sometimes that's the only thing we can see if it's a full moon. An image of the moon's mottled and pitted gray surface with one quarter of its sphere in shadow. And oh, it's, it's so washed, Yeah, it's washing okay. out most of the other dim gotcha. objects. But we can also see planets, uh, 
Saturn and Jupiter are oh, yeah. really cool to look at. You yeah. can actually see some of the banding and striping on Jupiter. You can see the rings and moons so cool. um, of Saturn. An image of Jupiter, a fuzzy brown and beige sphere with a striped pattern. An image of Saturn, seen as a tiny sphere with diagonal rings around it. And then as we move further away from Earth, you can see lots of other stuff too. Some of my favorite are actually some of the nebula. Um, yeah. And nebula are these gaseous clouds in space that are either um, a star that's kind of reached its end stage of life or just okay. clouds of dust that are hanging there in space that are illuminated by nearby stars. A field of bright scattered points of stars on a dark background. One of the, th one of the reasons I, I find um, uh, so much interest in looking at them is they're colorful. They've got depth. They've got movement almost. You can kind of picture this um, process of a star kind of puffing off of its la out outside layers as wow. it drifts off into space. An image of a cloud of semi-transparent reddish-green gas in space. And then getting lit up in colors like blue and green wow. and red. Wow, wow, that is so cool. I mean, you really uh, can't help but feel a little bit of awe and uh, feel a little bit dwarfed when you look at another galaxy. She nods. So oh, yeah. one of my favorite galaxies to look at is the Whirlpool Galaxy. An image of a Whirlpool-shaped galaxy with spiraling yellow cloudy arms wrapping around a central bright point. Oh. So you can kind of picture it as this this face-on view of a, a galaxy, almost like you're looking straight down at a dinner plate. And oh, the Whirlpool Galaxy is this... this um, it's got these long tentacle-like arms that are twisting around, wow. and it looks as though that, that it's caught a, a nearby passing galaxy. One of the galaxy's arms touches a smaller galaxy, which looks like a round cloud around a bright center. Oh. So the galaxy is just barely interacting with another smaller dwarf galaxy off to the wow. side. Wow, and you've seen this. Oh yeah, it's one of the objects that we look at each night we're doing programs. I would love to see that. What kind of programs do you offer with this observatory? And then I think you also have kind of just a larger overall program for the whole park for the astronomy program, right? Yeah, so we're really lucky to be able to offer these programs, again, because of the, the help from the Conservancy. Um, and these programs take place in two different places. A fast motion video of people visiting the observatory at night. A large telescope is set up outside next to the observatory. People mill around looking through the telescope. Here at the observatory, okay. and then over in Apgar on the west side of the park. And depending on year to year, those programs may take place in different locations. So it's best to, to check with the park on our website or our park newspapers to find out where programs are actually occurring. Some people at home might have heard of the Logan Pass Star Parties, right. which are really, really amazing and fun, and I loved them. And I don't, and I don't know if you can just speak to, um, you know, a little bit about how they are and if they'll ever come back. Lee speaks to a crowd of people at night. A long exposure of the observatory from a distance night with bright stars filling the sky above a mountain and lights flashing from cars below. Yeah, I really love the star parties too. There are these full-blown events with up to five, six hundred people showing up, so cool. the, all to see and enjoy the night sky. And we invite our friends from the Big Sky Astronomy Club oh. who. Um, are a local astronomy group outside of the park on the west side to bring up their telescopes and they help us meet the needs of all those 500 people yeah. by setting up like 20 different scopes. Wow. Yeah, I love those programs and uh, we will get back to being able to do those as soon as we are able. And I've been to one and I remember that we had so much fun and loved it so much we went and bought a telescope. I actually have one outside oh, yeah. that I can show you a little bit of how, a little bit about how we use the telescopes in our programs. Awesome, well let's go see it, I can't wait. All right, yeah, so this big black tube is one of our Dobsonian telescopes that we use during our nightly programs. But we have several different types that we use. Lee hoists the large black cylinder about the length of his body and sets it up in a field. This type is unguided, so an astronomer would actually have to physically move this one around in order to point it at distant objects. He adjusts the tilt and position of the telescope. Why do you have such a big program in Glacier, and why is it important that we are discovering the night sky here? Well, I mean, going back 10 years ago when this program first started, um, it was really an attempt to celebrate something that Glacier had. We had great access to dark skies, yeah. and uh, we were looking for opportunities to share that with, with the visiting public. Um, as the years have passed, we've kind of morphed into, and, and actually a lot of parks have morphed into not just recognizing and celebrating the dark skies, but also working to gain recognition and protection for the dark skies. And so that has 
kind of evolved into um, us becoming international dark sky parks. So here, we're not just Glacier National Park, we're Waterton Glacier International Dark Sky Park. The night sky rotates over the silhouettes of jagged mountains, the cloudy Milky Way visible as a vertical streak among thousands of stars. Intermittent streaks of shooting stars flare across the sky. And that that was given to us because um, of our quality of night sky viewing, is that correct? Yeah, so we have uh, pr fairly pristine dark skies, not a whole lot of light pollution nearby. Uh, we don't have uh, big cities causing sky glow off on the horizon. Um, our skies are really pretty dark. Um, so dark, in fact, that uh, we got a, a really high designation by the International Dark Sky Association. I know how important dark skies are for wildlife. I know a lot of nocturnal animals need these, uh, these skies to be pretty dark so that they can find food or, or maybe somebody doesn't find them. Birds and bats fly over a lake at dusk. But um, why are these night skies so important for people? Well, I mean, you, you talked about wildlife um, needing dark skies because they're nocturnal or because they uh, need to um, you know, rest at night or whatever, but people are like that too. I mean, every single organism uh, physiologically relies on a pattern that has existed on Earth, you know, since life formed here. And that day-night cycle rules us all. Yeah. Even if we live in a city that has lots of light pollution, our bodies still need that reset period. A city's bright skyscraper seen from a distance. A person walks through the pitch black park near a mountains with only a head torch illuminating the ground before them. But to go back to your point about the cultural connections, you know, from since the beginning of time as people were, you know, sitting around a campfire um, at night and looking up, the night sky was a dominant feature yeah. of their world. A campfire blazes at night. And, um, you know, the, the stories that grew out of the comets and meteors and all of these really important events came to be the way that people moved their culture through time. And that celebration and recognition is a big part of what our astronomy program here is about. What a great program and what a great certification that uh, was, was given with a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. How people we, look through the telescope at the sky. How do we share with people who can't get here to observe the dark night sky here? Yeah, so, you know, somewhere up above 80% of the United States um, can't see the Milky Way. The um, United States seen from space at night. Its cities appear as shining interconnected lights with the brightest areas on the East Coast. Almost 99% of us live in a place where we have some light pollution. So pretty much everybody doesn't have Glacier's night skies. Mm -hmm. But everybody can have access to Glacier's night skies um, through a couple of ways. You could visit, which obviously everybody can't do that. It's expensive to get here. Or you could log on to our website and go to our webcam page wow. and look at our dark sky webcam. Wow, so cool. So there's a webca webcam on the observatory? Yep. And no way. It has a... a 180 degree view of the St. Mary Valley here. Oh so this view gosh. behind us wow. is in that webcam no and it captures the northern sky, the southern sky, and pretty much everything in between. Sun shines down on an expanse of grass and wildflowers near the park's low mountains. And the really cool part is every single morning after the sun has risen, it takes all of those images from the night before uh -huh. and turns them into a time-lapse video what? that you can watch and fast forward and see everything that happened. A time-lapse of the night sky turning into a blue daytime sky. Thank you, Lee. This has been so amazing and I'm just thrilled to have learned all about the equipment, the program, the, the special certification that we have here and learning more about our dark skies in Glacier National Park and don't forget Waterton. So thanks again everyone for watching and I hope you stick with us because we still have many more science videos to go this summer. So stay tuned and we'll be seeing you down the road. Thanks again Lee and to all of you, happy Glacier Science Day! Bye-bye! They smile and wave.